nunchucks, nunchaku, you're gonna hold it right in the middle. The string side, or in this case, the chain is gonna come out your thumb side. Turn your hand, palm up. You're gonna warm up the wrists, the joints, with this forward orbital motion. This is also a self-defense move. This is just a, a spinning motion. Start slowly, go slow at first. Slow, smooth, smooth is fast. You're just getting it to move around the outside of your body. We call this an outer orbital. You're gonna turn your hand, palm down. Now you have an inner orbital and make sure your elbow is far in front of your face. You wanna keep that out, spinning it forward, just making a basic orbital motion. I'll show you from the right, correct angle. There we go. It's as simple as this. And then you just kind of speed it up, get some motion there, palm up, outer orbital, palm down, inner orbital. And the first skill I want you to know after this orbital, the orbital is kind of a warm up move, and you're going to use this. This becomes a skill that you'll have when you use your nunchucks. You'll see in movies with Bruce Lee or in the Naruto series. Uh, those guys are all you mighty guy. That's what I'm thinking of. They're all using these orbitals, but they always put them with something else. So you don't normally see them unless you break it down. But when you put those two together, that outer orbital, inner orbital, out, in, then you just put it together. You now have a figure eight motion. And this is your second skill or second trick using your nunchucks. So you're just gonna go in front of the body, slow is smooth, smooth is fast. I'll try to slow it down a little. You can see that my hand is staying closed. Keep your hand closed and turn it down and turn it back. And you wanna try to get the flow going. You also want the stick to be an extension of the other stick and be almost straight. So you're gonna turn it over. This is mostly the elbow. There's a little movement in, or mostly the wrist. There's a little elbow movement, a little shoulder movement. But if you go more elbow, it goes faster. It's a bigger motion. If you go shoulder, you're going bigger motion still. So understand that there are three joints. This joint, this is the shortest and the fastest usually. This is the second. You can also get a lot of speed, but it's a bigger motion. And then this one, your maximum speed and power, usually for self-defense, for fighting from the shoulder. So shoulder, elbow, wrist, three different distances or three different joints that you'll use. And all of these different moves, they can be done with one, both or all three at once. So you go through from here, I want you to take it back out to the orbital and I want you to go down and up, down and up. And now you're doing your first strike. These are strikes too, but this is really a self-defensive strike. This one looks good, this is more fun, but as soon as it hits something, it kind of bounces and you lose the flow. But when you strike for self-defense, you have full speed, for full power for self-defense. You're gonna hold here from the end and it's gonna be a singular strike. You can put strikes together in combination, but it's not necessarily the same as a spin. So the spin is more for looks, more for cool, coolness or whatever, and then these hard, fast strikes coming from the shoulder. So we're just going to go down and up in this vertical strike. Yes, these are metal. They're uh, lightweight metal. These are, um, they don't make them anymore. This is called XMA, which is extreme martial arts. These are more competition chucks. I love these too. I've got, I've got another pair of these, but they don't live together. They come up and down and then go across the body and back. And think of coming all the way from your shoulder to the opposite hip. And again, these are striking motions. So if you want to learn how to fight with your nunchucks, fight like Bruce Lee with nunchucks or fight like Mighty Guy, Rock Lee. And I know those are fictional characters, well, Bruce Lee was a real guy, but the characters he played in the movies, but it's all the same thing. They just happen to show it in the movies, but this is a legitimate, powerful, effective weapon for self-defense, although you can't carry it in most places. But you're coming across your shoulder, and then the last one here, back and forth, horizontal strike. Notice that my palm is pointing to, to the sky. It's facing up as I come across, and it's down, palm facing down on the way back. So palm facing up, palm facing down, up and down. Yeah, they're really good. 
I have another pair of metal over there which are much heavier than this one, and they have the longer chain. And those are great for self-defense. These I like just because I don't have to think about it much. I can just pick it up and start training with it. So you're going just back and forth. And then I want you to put them together so you have a three-strike combination that makes a right triangle because this corner is 90 degrees. I also call this the Bruce Lee triangle. So it goes across. I call it Bruce Lee. You could call it the Naruto Mighty Guy because you see these in just about every movie where you see someone messing with nunchucks, they start doing that three striking combo. And you're like, oh, what are they doing? How can I learn that? It's as simple as down and up, angle, and horizontal. Now, all of your strikes, all strikes are for self-defense. All strikes can be done at the head level, can be done uh, maybe they're reaching forward, trying to punch, trying to stab, striking, or coming through, coming through, you can go down to the knees. You can get the angle down. You can go higher for the strikes, but understand that just because you, you practice it this way doesn't mean it's always striking here. You can strike over there, you can strike down there. In fact, there's that one movie where Bruce Lee's on the ground and he's rolling around smacking people on their feet. Fist of Fury, that's what it is. Fist of Fury, Into the Dojo, Into the Dragon. It's had a lot of different names, I think. Maybe it's different movies and I keep thinking it's the same. I watched it recently, I watched it with my kids. Uh, fun, you know, fun movie to watch, kind of corny, but uh, the fight scenes were awesome. Just because it's older and the stuff they have now is much more violent. So I like the old stuff. All right, back to the tricks, because I want you to learn some new things. Bringing it to the front and the back of your upper arm will start to condition your arm. And this is all I'm doing. If your elbow's here and you pull it straight out, so it's opened all the way up, and now just your wrist is gonna turn hand down, and see how that just comes in there and hits that underside of your arm, that's the tricep back there, and that hits the backside of the underside of your arm. So just under and back. And you're just going up and down. And then I want you to bring it down. And when you bring it down, close your arm. And so this is another move you see often Bruce Lee does or Mighty Guy does. A lot of martial artists like to do this catch. You hold it there, you say, hey, back up. And then you can strike very quickly. You create tension, if I can get it, create tension by squeezing the chuck your arm against your body, you're squeezing it in, squeezing, 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 and then like a rubber band letting go, or arrow flying to the, to the target, you pop them, bring it out, strike very hard, very fast. So practice this front and back, snap it under, strike, front and back, snap it under, just over and over again. And I know we've done everything with the right hand and you're going to switch and do everything with the left hand when we're done at the end. I just want to show you everything in one and then you can just play it back, throw it in the other hand and do everything in the other hand. Now from here, I want to go into that orbital motion while I'm striking down and then do the orbital motion as I'm coming up. So I want you to practice adding in a spin because you'll see these spins a lot. And you'll see them a lot when you're watching a demonstration or a movie or maybe another video and you can't quite tell what is happening because it's moving so fast, oftentimes they're just adding a second orbital spin to the down and up motion, and now they're spinning. Or they sometimes can add more than one, so you can practice that way, just spinning down, spinning up, down and up, and go slow at first, slow is smooth, smooth is fast, and go for a nice uh, range of motion in your wrist. You'll increase flexibility the more that you do it, but you have to start by exaggerating the turning of your wrist. So in other words, not just a little motion, but a big motion. So you want to go spin down, spin up, down and up. And I want to show you the wrist roll. I want to finish with the wrist roll because in this, I don't do them a lot in the videos. Um, in, the, in the live workouts, but I want you to grow. I want you to try something new. I want you to do something that's going to make you drop your nunchucks. Unless you can already do this one, then, you know, fast forward, we'll find another one. But from here, I'm going to take my hand, kind of walk it up closer to the chain, and depending on how long your chain is, 
it's going to be different in how big your hand is. It's different for everybody, so you have to figure it out. And the way to figure that out is start with your thumb facing the ground and you pull it up. You swing it there, let it sit there for a second, open your hand, look at it, think about what's happening. You can use the other hand to keep it from hitting the floor as you learn it. And then turn your hand under and continue to snap it back. Now, you're in what's called a negative grip. There's forward spin and negative spin. Let me show you that. Forward spin, negative spin. But then there's positive grip and negative grip. Or forward spin and reverse spin. I just messed it up. Forward spin and reverse spin. Just proof that I make a lot of mistakes. But you have a positive grip or also known, a lot of people will call this a hammer grip. Because if this were the hammer, that's how you'd hammer. And they call this the ice pick grip or this the ice pick grip, like you're stabbing there. So from here, maybe it's the other way around. From here, you're gonna switch back and forth and you're gonna drop it. Like I said, I want you to do something that's gonna force you to drop it. I'm gonna lower the camera a little bit so I don't have to keep my hand up so high. So from here, you go into your figure eight and when you're coming back, now open your hand, turn it, catch it. Now you're in that negative grip and then go into a, the same exact figure eight, same figure eight, but now you're straight, you're spinning like this, right? And you're spinning with that backside or it's still the same thing. You can strike, you can defend yourself, you can hit very hard with all of these motions in this position and then you're going to go back into the positive grip. So you're gonna go from positive to negative grip with this spin. So from here, slow it down, let's back it all the way up. We'll bring it back to figure out how long your chain should be or where your hand should go, depending on your chain. Just practice this motion very slowly. Try to slow it down as much as I can without slow motion. I haven't figured out how to do slow motion live yet. And that's just a joke because I know that it's coming. Eventually they'll have a feature we can slow it all down. But you can watch this back, slow it down even more if you need to. Turn the hand, one, two. And then once you get it, go into your figure eight. And when you're on the opposite side of the body, so this is my right hand. When your right hand goes to the left side of your body, right hand goes to the left, that's when you do the switch into the negative grip, which means that you'll reverse that over here on the right side, right hand, right side. That's when you go back into your positive grip. So I want you to go switching, switching. And the way I've always practiced it, this is just my own thing, you can do your own thing, is I like to do about 10 of these. I count them in my head. And then I get to the 10th one, and I do 10 in the negative grip. I get to the 10th, and then I do 9. And then I do 9 on both sides, then I do 8, and then I do 8, all the way down until I'm doing 1 on each side. And that's just one way. And when, when I've done this in the past, or when I speed it up, because I want to get out of my comfort zone still, still I'm going to drop it a lot. And every time you drop it and pick it up, it's a statement you're making to yourself. You're, you're, it's like doing push-ups. You're developing the not quitting muscles. You're developing persistence muscles. You're developing that grit mindset, right? That never give up, never surrender, never quit. And you're fighting to grow. Most people will fight to quit. They find every reason why it's hard, it's difficult, I'm tired. I have too much to do, I don't have enough time. They look for every excuse in the world. They only need one. So you need to find one excuse, one reason, and then fight for that one reason. You wanna learn how to do this because you have a passion for it. You wanna learn how to do this because it's different. You wanna learn how to do this because you know it's good for your brain. It's better than a crossword or Sudoku. You wanna learn how to do this just because it makes you happy, right? That's all you need. And then every time you drop it, I had to throw it there before I threw it in the camera. Every time you drop it, pick it up. You can pick it up with your toes like I just did, or lean over, that's even better. Get a little crank in your back from picking it up so much. 
But then tomorrow, the day after, the next day, you'll drop it less and less and less. And it doesn't ever get easy. You just get better. You get stronger. You get faster. You develop more neural pathways in the brain, more cognitive abilities. You become smarter, more resilient, tougher, stronger. Nothing ever gets easier in life. And don't settle for easy. Everybody, that's like the, uh, the average, right? Everybody's looking to be average. There's no fun in average. There's no effort. There's no reward. When there's no effort, no reward. So go through, fight for it, fight to grow. Learn this new skill. Let's go over it one last time. Back it up all the way. And I'll show you in the left hand. You just practice this. It's as, as simple as this, as slow as this. Open the hand, turn the hand, take it. Swing it back. Open the hand, and you, you make a mental note. I'm opening my hand, I'm turning my hand, I turn it. Open the hand, turn the hand, and then slowly but surely, gradually, incrementally, speed it up. Slow is smooth, smooth is fast. Another way to think of it is crawl, walk, run. Go, go at crawl speed, this is crawl speed, and then you start to get that, go to walk speed, it's like when I teach people to do handstands and uh, walking on their hands and cartwheels. Everybody says, you can do cartwheels? I say, why? Everybody can do cartwheels. You can do cartwheels. No, I can't. I said, I, I got to teach you now. You can do a handstand? I said, yeah, so can you. No, I, you know, never been able to. Not since, not since I was a kid or not even as a kid. I can get you to do a handstand in 30 seconds. Well, we'll say three minutes in under three minutes depending on where your fear is. But even then, I'm gonna sidestep your fear and we're gonna get you there. You're gonna realize it's not about strength, it's about knowledge, it's about balance. All this stuff is about knowing and then taking some action on your knowledge. You just know it, you're a philosopher. There's nothing fun about being a philosopher. <laughs> maybe, maybe there's something fun about being a philosopher, but, but don't just be a philosopher. Be a practitioner and a philosopher. All right, so that's your new skill. Over the wrist or over the hand. And then later, you can work that into going you know, side to side. And then you can start to do, we'll learn on the next one how to do a throw and a catch, throw and catch, throw and catch, and then we'll get you without looking at it. You'll get faster and better. Let me know in the comment section what else you wanna work on. Please like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And share this with other, others. If you can Reddit this thing, even if you don't like it, you're like, look at this fool doing the, doing the thing with the chucks. Listen to what he said. Then put it on the Reddit. Get everybody to make a comment. I love that. And I'll see you guys in a little bit. Thank